Oh, shit. Oh, shit. No. You guys want to know why... You guys like my acting? You guys want to know why sellers care about the kind of financing the buyers have? You know, if it's all the same money at the end of the day, or as they say, the money's still green, why does it matter what kind of financing the loan is? Well, great question. It's simple and not so simple. This reminds me of when, like, when I was a kid and my dad wouldn't let me play RuneScape all night and I would just be crying in my pillow and just saying to myself, when I, when I have kids, I'm gonna let my kids play all day. And then once you become a parent, you're just like, what are you doing, bro? Stop playing. You're done. It seems like if I can call you guys out for a bit, it's easy to be on the other side and saying, well, why does it matter to the seller? You know, blah, 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 because we're the ones that are being impacted by it. If you put things on the other perspective, you kind of start realizing what the whole picture is. And this is what I hope this video will do for you today. So first and foremost, let me get my notes out. Let's make it clear. There are two parties you're presenting this offer to. You're not just directly presenting this to the seller. In a real estate transaction, there are about four parties negotiating. There is the buyer, which is you, and you have a buyer's agent. Okay, then the seller has a seller's agent. So the buyer and the seller are really never allowed to communicate with each other, nor is the buyer able to communicate with the seller's agent and or is the buyer's agent able to connect with this list, the, the seller. Got confused there. Hopefully that makes sense. So when you have an offer to present, your buyer's agent presents it to the listing agent, not just the seller. So in reality, when you're making an offer on a property, you're merely presenting your offer to two people, the listing agent and the seller. And when you think only from the perspective of the seller, yes, it doesn't matter what kind of loan it is because the seller's main primary goal in this transaction is to make as much money as possible. Most folks only sell or buy their home once, twice, maybe three times during their entire lives. So they don't really know what to look out for, right? They don't really know the key differences of each loan. So all they really care about is to make the most money. The listing agent's goal is different on the other hand. Now, I know a lot of uh, conspiracy chads out there are gonna be like, well, they wanna make more money, so they're gonna try to sell you. No, not really, not necessarily. The listing agent's main goal is to simply look good in front of their client. All these agents are gonna disagree with me saying, no, I, I care about what I do. I live and breathe real estate. Let's be real here. The seller's agents care about how they look. And, and I mean, it's their job, why not? They wanna sell the house fast. They wanna sell the house for more money so that way their seller makes them more money. They want to have the transaction be as smooth as possible with as least, gosh, my English is messing up there. They wanna have a smooth transaction with the least amount of road bumps, road, uh, bumps in the road as possible. That was really difficult to come out. I'm not sure why it struggled with that sentence so much. You get the point though. If they can achieve all of these things to their seller, not only did they look good in front of their seller and, and also feel like they deserve that money they made, but they feel great. They did their job as a listing agent. So if we consider both of these parties, it really starts making sense why it matters. So if this is the first video you watch, maybe you don't know yet, but most of you guys have already either watched my videos or some of my friends' videos, and you understand at this point now what the key difference is between conventional and FHA. Conventional financing only makes sense if you're 700 plus credit score. FHA, on the other hand, you can buy as low as a credit score of 600, low 600. And for your credit score to be in that range, you either are just starting out or you're recovering your credit or maybe you never really used it and now you're starting to use it so that's can you hear me crap what year is this and think i'm too early guys this is javier from the future it's all bs guys there's a real housing market crash coming and it's happening very soon please hide your kids hide your wife and whatever you do <laughs> sorry javier i have a secret message for you i'll leave it at the end of the video but for everyone else if you're looking for an agent referral anywhere in the country, you guys need to check out homeandmoney.com slash Javier. This program is amazing because you actually get assigned a personal concierge to help you get to know you. And then they find you a tailor-made realtor just to serve you. So these guys are legit. They've been helping thousands of people through the years, and I'm happy to be partnered with them. If you go to homeandmoney.com slash Javier or click the link below in the description, go check them out. Trust me, you're going to be happy if you're looking for an agent referral. doesn't matter if you're looking the next month or a year from now. You guys need to seriously check this out. But anyways, time for me to go in the future. Unfortunately, in this country, our credit score is what determines how much value you have. That's terrible. Dave Ramsey's overheating right now hearing this conversation like he cares. Your credit score determines your value. And this is terrible because you might be at a 720 credit score. But for some reason or the other, you have to go FHA. And for the listing agent, as soon as they see an FHA buyer, they think worst case scenario. 
You must have a super low credit score in the 600s. You must not be a strong buyer. On the other hand, if someone's barely qualifying for conventional and they are such a tough buyer, the listing agents automatically think, oh, this is a good solid buyer. This is conventional. They have a higher credit score. So why don't they care about the money? Well, there's a few instances why. The first thing is the offer amount doesn't really mean anything. Shocking, right? But like if there's a house for $300,000 and you're like, I'm gonna offer $400,000 on this, on this one. I almost said the B word. <laughs> that offer doesn't mean anything to the listing agent. If you're not waiving your appraisal or you're doing something creative with that, that offer doesn't mean anything. It's a garbage offer. Because if you're not waiving your appraisal, you're not doing anything creative that way, then that offer doesn't mean anything because everyone knows, or at least most agents know, that the number on the contract price doesn't mean anything. It's whatever the appraisal comes in at that's gonna determine how much money you're gonna really loan. So offering more money isn't just going to appease the seller and win you the offer. What they're looking for is guaranteed money. So how does this work? Well, you know, back in the day when there was a kind of more calm market, somebody could come in and offer $300,000 conventional with no closing costs. And if there was an FHA offer that came in at 320, but they were asking for closing costs, you would think, well, they're gonna go for the 321, right? No, because they're gonna go with the secure money. They're not gonna go for the maybe money. Sometimes they do. They go for the secure money. They know the conventional loan is more solid. They know that they're paying their own closing cost, And it just seems like a more solidified buyer. It's not just about the number. And you're gonna say, well, Javier, how come I keep getting beat up by these high priced offers? Well. The problem is that you're getting beat out by guaranteed money, right? If this house is selling for 300,000, someone comes in and offers 350 and they waive the appraisal, which means, hey, if this house doesn't appraise at 350, let's say it appraises at 320, we'll come up with $30,000 cash, no problem. That's guaranteed money and that's what wins over the, 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 the contract. But let's say you're in a situation where you have a pretty solid freaking offer, right? You're FHA, you're going against another conventional offer. They're about the same of a price. Why is it nine out of 10 times they're always gonna go with the conventional offer? Remember how I said earlier in this country, unfortunately, your value is determined by your credit score. And what happens is the listing agent is an active agent, right? Most agents know the general gist of each loan. They have experiences with different buyers with different loan types. And traditionally with FHA, this might sound terrible, and, and even though you might disagree with me, most lenders would tell you that FHA comes with a little more hassle. It's a government product. There's more guidelines to worry about, and they're just stricter how they're done. This agent has this experience of no, well, A, knowing that FHA you need a lower credit score for, and B, having these experiences in the past where FHAs you know, have gone wrong, even if it was like one out of 100 times it went wrong, they remember that. And it's so interesting because sometimes they'll have a bad experience with the conventional loan, and then they'll have a bad experience with the FHA loan, but we tend to remem really remember that FHA loan, right? Because then we think with an FHA loan, well, if only they were conventional, it would have not been an issue. But when there's a problem with a conventional loan, that's like, well, that buyer's crazy or that loan officer is crazy, right? There's never really the loan's fault at the conventional side of it. So these personal biases go to the presented presentation table. When the listing agent is talking with the seller and they're saying, here's this offer, here's offer B, here's offer C, here's offer D. They narrow it down to the top two offers that net the seller more money. And then you start, the seller starts asking questions. So financing, this one's FHA and what's conventional? What's the difference? What are they gonna say? The listing agent is gonna tell them FHA needs a lower credit score. They're three and a half percent down minimum. Use these for a first time home buyer. Doesn't matter if you agree or disagree, these are the sentiments that are being said. And the other guy says, well, how about conventional? Conventional, you can go as low as 680, but you can go all the way up to 800, even 850. Usually people that are more higher qualified have more of a down payment, even though you can technically still do 3% with conventional, you can also go 5, 10 or 20, right? So you say these things, oh, you know, they can go higher. Remember, it's not just about the money. This seller has needs. This seller has goals. Maybe they need this house to close on time and smoothly so they can close on their next house. They can't afford for a snack to happen right before closing so they can go back on the market and sell it again. They need this to close on time and efficiently. The listing agent on the other hand wants to look good for their seller and provide him a seamless transaction. What is a natural conclusion at this point? Now, I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like, well, that's bullshit. 
it's the same thing you know it's the same amount of money why does it matter well put yourself on the other side of the token you're literally worrying about a sell and a buy at the same time those are freaking stressful bro those are so stressful you need to make sure that the buyer you're choosing is super solid now super solid once again you're valuable if your credit's higher you're valuable if you can use a conventional loan if you're using an fha loan they're automatically at their guard like oh my gosh this is, this is gonna happen so that is why so that's why the seller cares about what kind of loan type it's a combination of different biases coming from the listing agent life experience coming from the listing agent what the seller's being told and ultimately the seller deciding what is going to be the most secure fit if you're upset about this don't be it's the way it is and it's the way it's always going to be they're not going to change the rules and say well from now on pre-qualifications won't show the loan type that's not happening what you need to do now more than ever is take care of your crap Get your credit score higher, start paying things on time, work on getting your balances lower. Just to be part of the conversation, you need to at least be conventional. Now, yes, you can get lucky and get something with FHA, I'm not saying that's not possible, but just to put your foot in the door and have a good chance with a good solid house in a good solid area, you wanna make sure that's solid. Javier, test, test, can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me, but whatever you do, man, don't seek, don't seek the Supreme Chad. Stop following the clues, okay? That's all I got to say. What year is this? Is this the year where I was still kind of chunky? Yeah, it is. Good news. You end up getting really buff, Javier. So congrats. All right, time to go back to the future.